Hey, good evening. It's John again to play some Immaculate Grid. I'm going to go as fast as I can here because the uh, Rangers and Diamondbacks are, um, like I say, are playing now, so I, I got to get in there. But uh, um, Rangers with a chance to clinch their first ever World Series. Pretty cool. Um, so I'm just going to get right into it. Uh, start sharing here. I think I had like a 20 on the main game yesterday, and then Kenny Lofton got me. Yeah, 21. Yeah, nothing super crazy here. I guess Billy Bean wasn't as uh, great a poll, but I was actually pretty happy to get first round draft picks. So let's see what uh, Grid Two Thirteen brings for us today. All right, no no new categories. We got thirty stolen bases. We got MVP. We're lining these up with the Phillies, the Braves, and the Yankees, um, and then the Blue Jays are going to line up with those teams as well. So. Um, for MVP Phillies, I got to go, I got to believe the most rare one will be one of the best relief seasons of all time with the 1950 pennant winning Phillies who were part of losing to the five time in a row champion Yankees, but Jim Constanty, it's a MVP in 1950 as a reliever. I think he went 16 and three for his record. If memory serves me correctly. So he gets 2% there. That's a good looking. We'll check out those specs. Um, Braves, Eddie Matthews did not win an MVP. Learned that one the hard way in one of the previous grids. He was second twice. Once to Roy Campanella and then I think once to Ernie Banks, but never won an MVP of his own. Um, I think, if I'm recalling right from the time I did put Eddie Matthews and was incorrect, it looked like the best option was 1947 MVP, Mr. Bob Elliott with the Boston Braves. So we've got our MVPs kind of clustered. In fact, I could I could really get these guys clustered in a a tight little window here. Let's go Bob Elliott. He goes 0.6%. And then uh Yankee MVPs include like there's a bunch of ones like Aaron Judge, um, not a whole lot actually from like the '90s and 2000s era teams. I mean, you have A Rod twice. Uh, you got Aaron Judge. Um, Jeter finished second, I think, a couple times. Teixeira finished second once. Um, I, th I think Jeter actually finished third to Teixeira in the '09 World Series here. Mattingly won an MVP. Um, and then I think you have to go back to, well, Elson Howard has an MVP. Um, I think Ruth and Gehrig both have MVPs under the the older format. Uh, DiMaggio won three, Mantle won three. I think Elson Howard is a decent pick. Joe Gordon uh, would be a good pick. Um, Yogi Berra won three awards. Um Phil Rizzuto would also work. In fact, I think Phil Rizzuto won right around the same time as these guys. But Rizzuto was a longtime broadcaster, so I'm going to go with Joe Gordon. So my MVP selections are all pretty old school, and they all I'll go pretty low. I, I think the Phillies only have a few, so 2% is probably as good as I'm going to get there. Um, And then, yeah, we can... Uh, move over here um let's see blue jays and, and yankees i want to say homer bush played for both teams uh roger clemens is probably going to be one of the more popular ones josh donaldson might be neck and neck with him um doyle alexander will work for both of these um that might be an interesting pick here phil necro will work uh, let's see. Go that route. So I can definitely go Doyle Alexander here. Ricky Henderson would work. Um, plenty, plenty of great options there. And for Phillies and Blue Jays, I know Matt Stairs works. That was more or less uh, off, off the top of the old noggin. Uh, Jay Happ works, where Halliday is going to be probably the most prominent, prominently featured name there. Um, 
Let's see if I can be uh, Scott Rowland, Hall of Famer. Scott Rowland will work. Um, McGriff works down here. Ooh, Cecil Fielder will work here. That'd be an interesting one. I'm kind of curious. Let's see how Cecil Fielder does. Let's see how many people remember he started with the Blue Jays. I've got a rookie card of Cecil Fielder with the Blue Jays, so. He goes sub 1%, and I think I will go Doyle Alexander here. I don't think he's as famous with the Blue Jays. He's definitely famous with the uh, with the Braves because he was traded for John Smoltz. Um, for that same reason, he'll he he's a he's not a good pick to go with with Braves Tigers. He'll he'll be easily ten percent because of the notoriety of that trade. But he also played for the Blue Jays, and I don't think he's as famous for them. Um, Phil Necro will also work there, so he works for a couple of these. Style him in two percent. All right. And then can we beat Matt Stairs? Matt Stairs seems like he's going to be like Roy Halley is going to be number one. I think Scott Roland, Roland will be a a slam dunk number two, unless I'm I'm missing anyone super obvious. Um, you can't select the 1993 Epic World Series, but that's a that's something that these two clubs both share. Um. Did not take the opportunity to use Otis Nixon yet again. <laughs> um, let's see. I'm trying to think. It, Mickey Morandini didn't. I don't think he played for the Blue Jays. I think I'm, I'm imagining. He played for the Cubs. I think I, I was imagining him in a blue uniform, but it was the Cubs uniform. I remember his first season with the Cubs because it was the Brewers' first season in the NL. Um. All right, so I am going to go with Matt Stairs. I, I kept trying to think of someone, a better pick. I'm just not coming up with anyone. Let's see. I could go around the horn a little bit in the 90s. Lieberthal, I've said Roland, Desi Relifer, Dad Glanville, um, Pat Burrell, no, uh, Abreu, Rico Bronia. I'm just going Matt Stairs. 2%. All right. That's not bad. Um, Let's see. 30 stolen base season for the Phillies. I think Doug Glanville would work for this one. I wonder if that's more famous than Juan Samuel, though. Juan Samuel stole like 70 bases one year in the 80s. Which, as I'm saying it, I'm I'm not as confident in Glanville, but I I think Glanville would probably work, and be better. But I'm a, you know what Glanville's on TV. That's my excuse. I'm going Juan Samuel. He takes four percent. Um. Uh, let's see, thirty stolen bases for the let's see for the Yankees. Ricky Henderson and Derek Jeter, I think, will be very very close. Um, I don't know if anyone did it this year with the bigger bases. Wouldn't shock me. Um, Chuck Knobloch will definitely work for the Yankees. Um, it's a decent slam dunk. That's, I mean, he was on the 90s dynasty team. So uh, Alfonso Soriano, though, I think will be ahead of Chuck Knobloch. Um, now that I think about it, I, I, I'm I, not 100% on Chuck Knobloch. It, just, it, it would surprise me if he didn't. Um, I don't think Cano ever did it. Um. A-Rod came close. The year he hit 54 home runs, he also had like 28 stolen bases. He came very close to a 30-30 season. Speaking of which, 30-30 season is going to be my cue to try out... How good will this be? I'm going to try him. Ron Gant. Because he had a couple 30-30 years in there. So You know what? who also works, though, is Henry Aaron. I'm going to go Henry Aaron. Or I could go Ralph Gar. That's the guy I'm thinking of, right? You know what? I'm I'm going Aaron. I'm gonna see how Aaron does. Two percent. Not bad for one of the greatest players of all time. Um, let's see. So for the Yankees, Willie Randolph. 
a, a couple names that spring to mind are are Willie Randolph and Roy White. Um, Randolph was kind of in that era. I think he had some legs. Roy White, I think, also had some legs. And also, he didn't play in front of a DiMaggio or a Mantle. Um, or he might have overlapped with Mant like late stage Mantle. I think he probably did. But po point is, Roy w White was not playing with a lot of other great Yankees. So it wouldn't surprise me if he had to run a little bit more and it wasn't like, Oh, you know, you're going to try to steal with mantle at the plate. It's like, no, you're, you're stealing with, you know, pick some obscure Yankee from the early seventies. Um, but I don't know for sure on those guys. You know what? I like the I, I like the reasoning. And I think part of this, because I don't win any prize money, turns out, for getting these right. Turns out I get paid the same, which is nothing <laughs> if I get them right or wrong. I like the reasoning I used for Roy White just now. And you know what? I'm gonna go, I think Randolph man, uh second guessing myself over here. Let's go Willie Randolph. Let's see if he works. Let's be Joey Gallo. Swing for the fences. Willie Randolph works with 4%, so it wasn't even that great a pick. Um, yeah, no uh, huge surprises here. I guess Acuna, I didn't mention that he was going to have the most, but that's not even remotely surprising. Um, Rollins, 645, even though he would have worked also over here as an MVP. Um and then, yeah, I I would say Henderson, number one. Jeter, probably number two. Let's see if I was right about Roy White, because that might have been a better one. Already sorted by seasons. Roy White stole 31 bases in 1976, so he would have worked. Bobby Bonds I should have gotten, because I knew he had a 30-30 season with the Yankees. I just uh, stuffed my memory. Who are these people stealing? Oh, okay. So I guess the question is, what is Ben Chapman doing stealing... 61 bases ahead of Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig. Steve Sachs, who got me the other day, I, I would have been right about Knobloch. Still 31, 38 bases. Brett Gardner, not surprising. Jacoby Ellsbury is surprising to me. I didn't think he stole that many bases with the Yankees. Bobby Bonds is the one I should have gotten. I, I, I think I also could have come up with Mickey Rivers. Randolph, four seasons. Roberto Kelly. Sneak it in there with 32. All right. Well, I'm going to go watch some World Series baseball. Uh, once again, these episodes are brought to you by Baseball's Most Fun, fun Frivolities. Thanks a lot for playing. And uh, we'll be back at tomorrow. Peace.